Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video we are going to be testing out a low profile CPU cooler and it is the Thermalrite SI100 um, white RGB low profile CPU cooler and what we're going to be testing it on, it's an AM5 platform, we're using an Adrock B650M motherboard, I'll leave all of the specs in the description down below, Ryzen 5 7600 and while it's nothing like a 7900X, it is no slouch and draws a fair amount of power so it should uh, be a good test for this CPU cooler. Now the specs for the, uh, the cooler are actually, um, it's rated to be able to cool 210 watts which is 60 or so watts lower than something like the peerless assassin 120 it does come with six six millimeter heat pipes um, with the fan uh, attached we're looking at 640 grams so it's roughly a pound and a half so it's pretty chunky uh, pure copper heat pipes aluminum fins that are nickel plated uh, the fans they are rated to go around 2000 RPM, give or take 10%. The noise level is 27.7 decibels. We will be testing that out uh, with my um, decibel beater. So in the box, got this cardboard, got a piece of foam. We have the white ARGB fan. We have the white Fin stack. Show it around. This is what it looks like. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, six millimeter uh, heat pipes, and they're all coated in white. And we got the copper base plate. And it has two lovely holes at the top, so you can get in there and attach the bracket. Let's see. All right, instructions. Where are you? Oh, over here on the side. What else? Alright, so this, alright, so the hardware that's included is for AM4, AM5 platform, uh, Intel, LGA, um, 11.5, 1200, LGA 20X, LGA 1700, so nothing yet about the new LGA 1851. I'm sure that will probably come out soon enough or they'll probably have brackets that you can get online um, for these uh, um, coolers. However, LGA um, 51 just came out, didn't come out too long ago, it was like what, a month or so ago? And I got this probably about a month or so ago as well, so they probably just haven't had time to update the brackets that come with it. Unless you can utilize these brackets for LGA 1851, I'm actually not sure. Everything is labeled directly and indirectly, so your screws and everything, you have one or two options. You have Intel, which is at the bottom, that's unlabeled, or you have AM4, AM5 at the top, which is labeled. And same with other risers, so you'd use those hardware with these risers depending on what, um, what motherboard you're using it on or what socket you have. And then there's also a back plate. This back plate is for LGA, and it says it right there on the top. You might not be able to see it on there, but it's engraved which um, LGA socket the bracket's for. And that's the back plate. And then these are the brackets that get mounted, and they are labeled uh, AM4, AM5. And then the Intel ones have no markings but it's to be used in general for each of the um, Intel motherboards. So let's go ahead. So we're gonna install this and we're gonna test it and see how well it can cool the 7600X. So if you've installed a Thermalrite cooler before, it's all relatively the same. So I got all my hardware and they're gonna, the plastic risers are gonna go on top of here. 
the posts sticking out that are on the back plate. So the mounting brackets, uh, let's say AM4, you can also use it for AM5. And we're just gonna screw these in. Tighten them, but only snug. Don't go too tight. It does come with its own thermal paste. Now, when putting thermal paste on one of the AM5 CPUs, uh, it's best to be a little more careful. Um, if you are concerned about it, you can use like the back of some kind of thin piece of cardboard, or if you have an old gift card lying around or something like that. This gets a little messier than the old AM4 or Intel CPUs because they have all these spaces where gunk can get into. Well, by gunk, I mean thermal paste can get into. So a little pea-sized amount in the middle is what I do. And that should be enough. The pressure, as we're screwing down the, uh, the actual cooler, will push that thermal paste, uh, thermal paste all over the place. This is not conductive, but it can be messy. So you don't have to worry about frying any of the components, but you don't want this to get down inside of the um, inside of the pins at the bottom of the chip just because, well, once you get it in there, it's a lot harder to clean, and you, chances are you can ruin your motherboard. Those pins are very delicate. Now you just have to decide which way you want it to face, this way or this way. Per the instructions, it says so it shows the face it away from the RAM which is probably smart because then you're gonna have some of the airflow over the VRAM and will help cool the VRAM and flop back and forth between each screw tightening each one just a little bit at a time and keep doing this again until it's snug, not too tight. These brackets that are going to anchor the fan to the CPU cooler. This is the part of the fan that's going to be up. I don't think there's any markings. Yeah, there's no markings on here that show uh, which way the airflow is going to be going, but it's going to be going through here and out the back. And that's the part that's going to be uh, attached to the bottom of the cooler. And then you just have to find out which way is best, uh, the best angle so you can hide your cables. So this is a little annoying to kind of attach. Go up through that hole. So we go up through those two holes on the top and then getting this, I almost have to push that in. Uh, so it slips into this little groove in the fins. There we go, and that's attached. So this braided cable with four holes on it is gonna go into here, if I keep that focused, where it says CPU fan one, that's where it's gonna go. Now, if you had a water pump, if you had uh, an AIO, the fans would go right here, and then the water pump power supply would go, uh, come on, there we go, it would go right here. And it just slides in like that. Unfortunately, on this motherboard, there is no ARGB connector. However, there is this down here that kind of looks like one. It's not, but if you have an ARGB connector on your motherboard, it's going to look exactly like this, but it'll have um, ARGB or some kind of writing at the bottom. It's, um, it looks like it's a four pin with one missing, and that's exactly what this looks like right here. It's got two pins on one side, a space, and then one pin on the other side. Since my motherboard does not have a RGB, I have a hub. It does do fan power, but I'm not connecting it to there. I'm just connecting that straight to the motherboard, but ARGB, I will connect directly to here. As you can see, we are getting around 44 decibels. So we're now into the second 30 minute run of Cinebench R23 multi-core. So all six cores are being engaged uh, to the max that they can. And we're hitting a temperature of 85 point, well, max temperature of 85.6 degrees over the 30 plus seven minutes. So over the past 37 minutes, that's the highest the temperature reached. And it was using 122 watts. Now, this CPU has a 
a max temperature max temperature of 95 degrees so we're still fairly well off of that even though it is getting pretty warm and this is max so we're gonna go and test this out in um in, in some games to see how well it can cool uh, not under max load so starting off with the newest game on this list which is dragon age the veil guard just came out uh, a couple of months ago and it is a very CPU intensive game because as you can see right here, we're at 79%, 80%. We're hovering around pretty high utilization. And according to MSI Afterburner, we're pulling around 105, 103 uh, watts and we're hitting a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius. Now we're moving on to Hogwarts. And in this game, we're using quite a bit less of the CPU. We're hitting around the 51%. And at that rate, we're using 80-ish watts. So that's 20% less power than what uh, Dragon Age was using. And we're hitting 66, 65 degrees Celsius. And now we're moving on to the Black Myth Wukong. This is another fairly new game, and it's actually now using probably the least amount of uh, CPU power versus the other two games. We're only pulling in the low 70s for watts, and it's running at just shy of 40% utilization. And we're still hitting the mid 60 uh, for temperature, 60, 63 degrees. 